Hey guys, it's Redstone here, and you know, this is a little bit of a different review angle, but I wanted to switch it up this time. So, we are going to do a review of the Monoprice Maker Ultimate 3D Printer. Are you ready? I know I am. Let's roll the intro. <laughs> So, you might be wondering why I have this printer. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for getting me this printer. Ryan, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, thank you guys for motivating me and getting this printer. Because I bought it with my own money. Thank you. But, what do I like about this printer? Well, there's plenty of things I like about this printer. There's plenty of things I don't like about this printer. And that's what I'm going to roll down this whole video about. It's just going to be a review of the Maker Ultimate 3D Printer. Let's see the technical specs of the printer. It has a 200 by 200 by 175 millimeter build volume. In American terms, that's about 8 by 8 by about 6.87 inches. But it can go up to 8 inches, which is a little bit confusing. It matters how your limit switch is um, mounted, and it also matters how tight you have these screws. But either way, it's a pretty big build volume. The issue, though, with this build volume is whenever I go over 180 millimeters on this build plate, it says error. Error. The print is out of the build volume. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not out of the build volume. It's right there. So that's why I got a little bit annoyed with that. But besides that, the, um, the build volume is fantastic. So, the build volume is good. Now you might be saying, Ryan... Well, why do you have a 3D printed fan trap? Well, unfortunately, guys, I think you've heard this from a lot of people. The fan trap on the original version, or the, even this version, sucks. I'm telling you guys this right now, it sucks. And you guys need to know that. Um, this, this, uh, this fan trap, you need to print one. You need to. This is a necessary upgrade. Like, yeah, for the CR-10, you got strain relief cables. That's not a necessary upgrade. This is really necessary. I've seen huge leaps in prints with this. And, um, now it's not perfect. It still doesn't cool that well. But that's because of the, you know, bad cooling fan on the printer. Now, what are the features I really like about this printer? Well, there's a couple. A heated bed. A lot of printers these days don't have heated beds. <coughs> the Vinci Junior. <coughs> but, um, a lot of these printers don't. And I love the heated bed. It reaches temperatures very, very quickly. And what's awesome about the heated bed, voice crack, but what's awesome about the heated bed is that it heats up so quickly. It heats up to 60C in under 30 seconds. Yeah, you heard me. Under 30 seconds. Let me say that again. Under 30 seconds. Unbelievable. It heats up the build plate faster than it actually heats up the nozzle. Not even joking. But... You might be wondering, what is that nozzle? Well, it's actually a Mark 11 nozzle, nozzle, which is really good if you think about it. Um, and a Mark 11 nozzle, you might be saying, well, how much does it clog? You know, Mark extruders really do have a tendency to clog. Not had a clog on it yet. I loaded some cheap Hobby King filament. Review will be coming soon for this filament. And I love, I love the nozzle on this machine. It works very well. And what the 3D printing professor pointed out about this printer, it's very easy to unclog. There's two little screws right here. You take off this nozzle, you clean out the filament. Not had a jam yet, but I think I'm going to have one pretty soon. Now, let's dive into some issues I've been having with this printer. Then we'll get to the print quality. So, there's actually quite a lot of issues I've been having with this printer. And most of them were things that could have been improved with this printer. First things first, the knob fell off. I mean, it works still, but come on, Monoprice, really? Have the knob on there? I mean, I guess other people have been receiving it with a knob, but still, guys, really? Just get the knob for it. But, um, another thing I don't really like about the system or this printer itself is the nauseous fan noise. 
of this printer. Let me show you what I mean. Seriously, now you don't make that noise, but sometimes it does. Basically what it does is it goes ah, and this fan right here just turns on like, ah, for like five minutes and then it stops. It's really annoying, um, but yeah. So those three issues are really the only issues I'm having with this printer. Now, you guys might be curious. Well, how does this thing print? Well, first, I was a little bit disappointed. And the reason why I was disappointed with the print quality of this printer, I had very high expectations for this because I heard this thing prints like a gem. But I've been not getting great print quality out of it. And that's what frustrates me the most about this printer. The speed is there, you know, it's pretty quiet, stuff like that. But print quality, all that matters for a printer, printer basically. I mean, there's other stuff, but mostly print quality. I have a print right here. This is a ray gun from Call of Duty. On, if I can get it out of here. But um, this is a ray gun from Call of Duty. As you can see, it looks pretty good. Now, you might be wondering why one side did not finish. Well, actually, the power went out here. Um, and a feature that should have had was a ground-out sensor. It does not have one. But as you can see, print quality is pretty good. The issue, though, with the print quality on this printer is that the lines, they're smooth. But in terms of an over extrusion, this thing over extrudes through the roof. Guys, I'm running this at a 100% flow. No, no really defect on the print. No, they're, they're just coming out pretty bad because of the over extrusion. Now, how big of this issue is, it's not really that big of an issue. And if you're talking about quality in terms of the Z axis and X and Y direction, very accurate. I'm telling this right guy right now, guys. This is the best print printer that actually produces good prints I've used for mono prints. I've used other printers that they have. Do not buy their make um do not buy their um i3 plus guys. It sucks. I'm telling you guys right now, it has terrible print quality. I'm just so spoiled from the Ultimaker's print quality. But I don't know. I don't like that print quality. Now, the thing about this printer that really makes me want to use it more is actually the interface. As you can see guys, I don't know if you can see it that well, it's the Ultimaker interface. I have an Ultimaker 2 Go right here. Same exact interface, okay? There's no difference. The only difference is this one's blue tinted, this one's gray. This one looks prettier, of course, but I don't get it. How this printer is $700. It makes no sense. Yeah, I could have Wi-Fi. Yeah, I could have a touch screen. But I'm going to tell you this, guys, right now. This thing is the best value for a 3D printer I have come across. That or the CR10. The reason why I recommend this over the CR10 is because you're going to get a lot better of an experience than the CR10 in terms of ease of use, in terms of print quality. I still say the print quality on this is better than the CR10s. But then again, the CR10 has like a bigger bill volume and stuff like that. Uh, one also point before I end this video, so I'm stop rambling, right? But um, as you can see, how do you level the bed, Ryan? Well, it's actually very simple. It's exactly the same as an Ultimaker. Um, basically, it goes around to three corners, um, and you adjust it. Very, very simple. That's very cool, isn't it? I know. I love it. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if we can get five likes on this video. I will have another review up pretty soon of a printer, <coughs> DaVinci Junior Pro. <coughs> but um, if you guys are excited for that review, please belt the bloody like button. We'll see you all later. You're a bunch of bloody legends. Bye.